either you will realize that you are good at it or you will realize that you are good at something else if whether or not it solves the end purpose it at least solves the fact that you get to know what you want Um, I am a electronics and communication engineer. I studied at Manipal University. I uh, graduated in 2012, and then I worked in Bangalore for almost three years in Ericsson. Um, but I was always interested in uh, more of the data analytics and you know uh, programming space. So after three years, I wanted to um, you know go for my higher studies. I applied to a bunch of universities. Uh, got through at Carnegie Mellon. um i studied information systems management it was a one year course um so started in 2016 graduated in 2017 and then i started working in pittsburgh uh, pittsburgh is where the university is and i uh, my first job was as a data scientist uh, at a um real estate uh, mortgage finance company uh, worked there for two years then joined amazon um worked there for about 10 months and then i'm currently at intuit i'm a senior business data analyst um i do most of my work is around ab testing but there's also a lot of uh, business metrics reporting and you know stakeholder management this particular course in carnegie mellon that was one of the most expensive courses that i had applied for it was um it was one of the most ambitious colleges as well that for me uh, i had very little hope that i would you know be selected for it but the application was free and i decided that you know i should at least give it a chance um the course was extremely uh, you know expensive and the, there is a reason why it was expensive because it's like the number one course in the us but um, at the time uh, you know funding was like one of the biggest issues that i had to solve and without a good solid option i couldn't i would not have even decided to go for it the way i was able to solve it is thanks to a classmate of mine who told me about a company called prodigy finance and prodigy finance is by far the best option for indian students to you know uh, fund their education in us at least that's my perspective i'm sure there may be other options that have arise you know arisen since i you know i had the need to do this but at that time prodigy finance was uh, willing to give you 7 to 10% interest on an education loan without having to put any collateral whatsoever and that was like there was nothing better than that in the market at that time i even though i was interested in data analytics and you know programming but i i wasn't aware that there was a field specifically called data science and data analytics what i was what i noticed about myself was um i was interested in automating things writing some code uh, you know being more quantified rather than um being more operation or process driven um i did not really spend any time you know figuring out if there is any um universities or any courses in india and uh, the reason being that i all i had given me my gre um, you know when i was in undergrad and then my course my score was about to expire and i had never applied to other universities so i decided that let me just see if if at all i you know i can use my uh, gre score and see let's see what i get so then i started um, you know figuring out what universities exist in the us what kind of courses they offer what is my interest started speaking to a bunch of my friends who uh, who had gone to the us to study you know before me so that's where i kind of started the journey of figuring out um, you know what what you know is in what course i should take us was my first choice and mostly because i i had friends from my undergrad who were doing well and who were happy at us and i have some uh, you know relatives who were doing well as well so Uh, in undergrad i always wanted to at least explore the option of you know studying abroad that depends on a couple of factors uh, some universities will waive the tuition fees if you get like a ta or a ga uh, jo- a part time job while studying so if you if you get an admit from such a university then you know your best bet to recover the loan is by getting that ta kind of a job and once you get it then you basically just return the uh, whatever unborrowed sum or whatever borrowed sum you have and the rest of the loan never goes through because you never borrowed it um and then if you happen to have an admit from a university that does not have this particular uh, waiver 
which was the case, which was my case i had a ta ship but uh, kanege melon does not waive tuition fees so at that after that point it all depends on you know the the course you studied um, and you know what kind of job you get um, on average i would say like you know one and half to two years is what you will generally take to repay your loan but there are many different ways to accelerate it to you know to make it go it slower slower or you know it just depends on you know what that initial salary package you get and uh, how much you actually ended up paying for your tuition fees because my particular case was um, it was around 92k uh, which was my one year tuition fee which was like the highest that i have ever heard of in any university uh, so it, it really depends on that that you know those factors that i mentioned no uh, but you know on average you'll say like one and a half two years you should be able to repay your loan just fine there are many different factors at this point of the visa uh, you know work visa uh, f- flow or you know process um your your f1 opt and stem opt are kind of a given because if you have taken a stem course then you will definitely have 3 years to work uh, uh, in your work visa first year, one year will be an f1 opt and then the next two years will be on a stem opt so there are no there are very very rare cases of you not being able to get those three years the only piece is whether you are able to get an h1b visa approved first of all there is a lottery in you know whose application gets picked so there is nothing to do about your potential or your company's potential or your salary or nothing else right so uh the first biggest piece of luck is um you know getting your uh, uh application picked up and if you get picked up then the, there are very few factors that um there are some factors that de- define you know how whether you'll get approved M- most importantly is your educational background and the company that you're working at um as long as you have a clean education history and you know you went to a reputational university and you're working at a you know reputational company it doesn't have to be like an amazon or a google it, it, even if it's a, a regular small size company as long as they have their you know documentation and uh, accurately and you know they uh, they they pay you fairly for the job that they're asking you to do um your, your hnb will generally get approved um other cases where hnbs won't get approved is if you if you lack some kind of a documentation maybe there are some school years that that you had a gap for but you don't have any documentation to explain it so then uscis like the agency that you know approves it they they kind of have questions on okay what is what what happened here or what happened there so as long as your documentation is all in line and you know you are working at a reputable company then it, you should generally just get approved there are many different scenarios where um, you know you start working at a consultancy firm um, and and then it it is a very different ballpark or it's a it's an entirely different set of rules that govern whether your hnb gets approved so my advice would be to try to stay away from those consultancy firms as much as possible unless you're in like a um, you know just there's no way out kind of a thing but i wouldn't advise anyone to go into a consultancy firm well i personally would like to continue working here in the us um the biggest reason is that uh, the career growth no not just the career growth the career exposure i would say uh, that that you know that uh, a us company offers you is much different than what you get in india so while i miss home and my friends and my family every single day um from a career perspective uh, there is a lot of growth that i can have while staying in the us so that is a wish that uh, that i have and the other side of the reality is whether it is possible and whether it is possible it goes into all the visa issues that currently exist and you know the uh, the political environment and a lot of different things right so those are things beyond my control so you know as long as the us will have me i'm happy to you know continue learning here basically and as far as what my friends are doing you know most of them are basically in the same boat um either you love your job or you um and and you want to stay here and learn as long as you can or you you know just feel like the us is not the place for maybe emotional reasons maybe career reasons maybe family reasons but you feel like us is not the place and you know you have spent two or three years here you got you got an idea of what it it is like to stay here and then you go back to india and do your own 
CMU is a really fun place but you know I unfortunately I was in a course that that was just so hectic that I would uh, you know you, you had to study for like 14 to 16 hours a day and you rarely get any time to just chill out or you know have fun uh, that being said um, once you're in a group where everyone is working hard hard like you then you you kind of party harder because you have to work already so much so my weekends typically if there is no assignment that i'm you know i'm chasing or no assignment deadlines then we we'll just typically sit at a bar um, you know talk to our friends just have a good evening and you know go back and you know take some nights rest so that we can you know start it all over again the next day then in terms of things to do um, pittsburgh as such is not a very touristy place i would say there are tons of tons and tons of bridges which is very unique to a city in the us like pittsburgh has the most number of bridges in any city in the us so um, there are a lot of different viewpoints that you could go to there are um, there is a it's it's a university town a university town so there's a university of pittsburgh which is very which is kind of next to carnegie mellon and so you can make friends who are studying at upit and um, you know you kind of know how their life is and and all kinds of things there are amazing bars there's there's decent to le- less than decent indian food but um, you know you kind of have to make do with what you get and so you either you know eat at an indian restaurant or you just start cooking on your own and because if you if you're bored of you know the food that they give um other than that i kind of went to a concert the first time in in my life in the in us so i attended a cold play concert and that was like phenomenal um and then you i i tried um going to a baseball game as well because that's something that americans do on a weekday weekend uh, the the big sports fans and they like to you know go and physically see the play game so that those are some of the things i did but most of the times it's just hanging out with your friends and either eating or drinking or just studying together <laughs> I'm happy that you know uh, there is a website like Yocket and you know dedicated people who are trying to get all uh, who are trying to source all this information because I remember at my at the time when I was going through this I I didn't really know enough and I would just rely on my friends giving me information so I think it's a great cause that you're working on so thanks for setting all this up and you know appreciate your efforts to help other indian students if you like this like share and subscribe yocket uh, it's a great place to learn all the answers to questions you have